on the surface of an average planet, circling an ordinary yellow star, an advanced intelligence searches the skies for evidence of life. Professor Frank Drake. Frank Drake. Frank Drake. Frank Drake. Frank Drake. Frank Drake. Dr. Drake of the National Radio Observatory. Well, my roots in, my roots in SETI go back to when I was eight years old. And uh, one day, I don't know why, my father happened to mention to me that there were other worlds in space. And when he used the word world, I thought, just like my world, just like the Earth. And I thought, ooh, that's interesting. There are other places just like this. One night while I was observing for my doctoral thesis at Harvard on a small radio telescope there. And on this special night, there was a whole new signal there, a narrow band signal that had been added to the signal coming from the Pleiades. And so I thought, wow, maybe this is evidence of extraterrestrial life. Well, it turned out to be a signal from a nearby ham operator, but the seed was planted and it was only a few years later, I was at Green Bank, building the first telescope there. And it always came to my mind whenever I dealt with a new telescope, could it detect a reasonable intelligent signal from the distance to the stars? And in 1958, the answer to that question for the first time was yes. SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, has come a long way since early experiments by young radio astronomer Frank Drake. In 1960, Drake made the first radio search from Green Bank, West Virginia. He called it Ozma, after a princess from the fictional land of Oz. He looked at just two stars at this one frequency in a search of moderate sensitivity. This is one of the great questions. How many advanced civilizations capable, at least of radio astronomy, are there in the Milky Way galaxy? It depends on the total number of stars in the Milky Way. Let's call that um, N sub star. It depends on the fraction of stars that have planets. Let's call that F sub P. If we multiply all these numbers together, we've estimated capital N, the number of civilizations. This equation, due mainly to Frank Drake of Cornell, is only a sentence. The verb is equals. So let's try to go through the program of this equation. SETI scientists often use what's called the Drake equation to illuminate the necessary conditions for contact and to provide a rough estimate of the number of other civilizations. I invented an equation which gives us guidance as to how to best uh, plan our searches it uh, produces an equation which it tells you perhaps an estimate of how many civilizations there are out there to detect and thus how many stars you must search thoroughly before you have a good chance of success. So SETI becomes a way to test our theories of the origin and evolution of the universe and the place of life within it. Some factors in the Drake equation are well determined, others are not. We're pretty sure our galaxy has about 400 billion stars, and maybe 10% of them will shine long enough for life to evolve. And uh, that was an important thing. It, uh, it uh, brings understanding to the subject. It tells us what we need to know to pursue the search. Uh, and it encourages people to conduct our searches. So that's a good thing. But in addition to that, I think, uh, Contributions I have made, are one which I'm very proud of, which I don't get much credit for, is making the Arecibo radio telescope into a radio telescope. When first built, it was no good for radio astronomy, and I changed that. This is the largest radio radar telescope on the planet Earth, the Arecibo Observatory. It's located in a remote valley on the island of Puerto Rico. It sends and receives radio signals. But it's so large and powerful 
that it could communicate with an identical radio telescope 15,000 light years away, halfway to the center of the Milky Way galaxy. In 1965, I went to the telescope as its site director in charge of the telescope at the observatory. And there was a big problem in that it was unable to perform as a telescope at the radio frequencies that are of interest to radio astronomers. It was only good at low frequencies. It was a very crude reflecting surface with undulations in it of many centimeters, which made it so that it could not correctly focus. When this hurricane came, I stayed with two graduate students and we taped a scale on the structure that uh, holds the energy collecting area on the telescope and then set up a theodolite in the control room looking out the window at that scale on the telescope and just watched it as the hurricane blew through. And we discovered, wow, that the uh, suspended structure hardly moved at all. It moved about a centimeter and that surface was replaced and it has been a great success. It's still in use. It's produced one Nobel Prize and uh, I consider that one of my major accomplishments. The Arecibo Observatory has been used to search for signals from civilizations in space and just once to broadcast a message to a distant star cluster called M13. And this, of course, greatly encourages us to think that there's life out there to be found and motivates us to uh, ask for more resources and, in fact, devote major resources to searching for signs of intelligent life. A philanthropist with large resources decided that SETI was something that should be supported that is perhaps the most crucial scientific and humanitarian uh, experiment that we can conduct and uh, succeed in. Breakthrough Listen takes the search for intelligent life in the universe to a completely new level. It's a difficult search. There are not many signals. They are not strong. We don't know that they are not there, contrary to what some people think. We have done a lot of searching, but there are so many stars and so many possible frequency channels that we have hardly touched the possibilities. So the fact that we have not yet succeeded tells us nothing. And it calls for much more comprehensive searches, and that's why I'm here today. Do other civilizations exist? Today, with Breakthrough Listen, why joining you on that quest? It is time to open our eyes, our ears, and our minds to the cosmos. Hi, Frank. Congratulations on your 90th. On this happy occasion of your 90th trip around our star. At the 60th anniversary of Project Ozma, I just wanted to recognize your contributions to the field, but also personally thank you for your help and support over the years. Sorry that uh, we didn't get to celebrate in Greenbank. Happy 90th birthday, Francisco. You've done some pretty amazing things in your life. It was Osmo that led to my long-term interest in SETI. You have been an inspiration to me and everybody at the Breakthrough Prize Foundation. So I thank you for starting all that. You spawned a new and expanding field, SETI. Congratulations. Giving us so much of your time and even inviting us into your home. Keep on going because you continue to provide inspiration and guidance to all of us. Happy birthday, Frank. So, hi Frank. Happy 90th birthday. Thanks so much for getting this grand adventure we've all been on for so long started. Frank, your lifetime dedication to the science of SETI is an inspiration to all, but especially to our family, since the Tatal Scope 
played such a crucial role in your research. And you've also done some other remarkable things outside of science. First, you married me. A long time ago, when I was a graduate student, it was your work that, that really inspired me to continue in the exoplanet and search for life. I just wanted to say to you that I'm not sure what I'd be doing now, but it wouldn't be in the brave field of SETI were it not for your pioneering Ozma search 60 years ago. And then you became the father of our two daughters, Nadia and Lila, who are two of the best human beings I know. Happy birthday, Dad. Happy birthday, Frank. Yay, 90 orbits around the sun, Dad. Thank you, thank you for that. Happy birthday, Imperial Wizard. Yes, you are the magician of the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank you for uh, half a decade of of friendship and wish you the best on this uh, special day. Happy, Happy 90th, 90th birthday, birthday, Frank. Happy birthday, Frank, and thank you. Happy to wish you the best 90th birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Frank, and we look forward to once again being with you at Green Bank as soon as possible. So even though you don't have pointy ears yet, I'd like to say, live long and prosper, my dear husband. Happy birthday, Frank! Happy, happy day.